Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar, Remember Everything Instant Idea Capture with Visual Notes and Thought Trails. Thank you so much for joining us. Today's webinar is just really all about focusing on special tips and tricks within the brain for quick, quick capture and easy visual knowledge management and recall of that information, access to that information again and again at a later date when it becomes important. So I'm going through the webinar today assuming that you know a bit about the brain software. Uh, we've got some really helpful tutorials on our website. We teach a brain 101 class every Friday afternoon. So I encourage you if you have not taken a brain 101 class in the past uh, to join us for a brain 101 in the future. And today we're going to build on that sort of a little bit more of uh, some advanced features or just specialty features within the brain application to really create a digital reflection of your own organic brain. We are so accustomed to storing data in files and folders. It's a very linear structure. It's really just a digital filing cabinet. And the brain actually allows us to break out of those barriers and display and access information the way our own organic brain thinks about that information. Now, I always like to say no two people think alike, so therefore no two brains are ever alike. And I'm gonna share with you different features within the brain application. And it's really up to you to decide, you know, which of these features are going to be working best for your environment. So let's go ahead and dive right in. First and foremost, full disclosure, I am demoing in my real brain today. This is my real brain database for recreational information. Actually, since I said full disclosure, this is a sterilized version of my real brain. Uh, I copied my brain into another uh, copy. I can share with you later exactly how that works within the brain, uh, but copied it and uh, only copied out um, information that I'm happy to share. In my real recreational brain, I also keep track of banking information, retirement, finances, and so forth. Didn't want to share any of that in the demo today. Um, so this is a copy of my real brain, my real data, just a, a bit sterilized and uh, for sensitive information. And right now, what you're seeing on the screen is what we call uh, normal view plus one is technically what we call it. Typically, when you open up the brain, you have the plex on the left and the content over on the right. You'll notice that mine is divided into a side-by-side -side view, that's my preference. All of this is highly customizable. You know, I can switch to an over-under view if that works better for my screen real estate. I like this side-by-side -side view and I can always, uh, you know, minimize the notes, maximize them using buttons in the smart splitter. You'll also notice that I run my brain in what we call dark mode, uh, sort of a darker background. I find that I am working a lot at night and it's just simply easier on my eyes to uh, use the brain in dark mode with the dark sort of color coding happening over in the content area. And again, that is a topic of today's webinar, personalizing the brain to reflect your own thought processes. So we'll talk about that in more detail, all the different options that you have uh, with, with formatting those notes and customizing your notes. But first let's talk about the Plex. So you'll notice that I'm viewing two generations away from the active thought. So I'm currently on my own personal thought, Matt Caton, and then I have these, uh, what we sometimes like to call um, high level uh, thoughts or, or buckets, you know, that you can place information into. Now this particular brain, you'll see in just a moment, with the editing that I did at taking out the sensitive info, I think there's there's probably still maybe two or 3,000 thoughts in this brain. You might think that's kind of tiny. Uh, maybe you think, wow, that's, that's, that's huge. Uh, I've seen brains with um, well over a million thoughts. Uh, they do exist and they can exist. Um, this particular brain, just a couple thousand thoughts in them. And obviously everything is related to me. Every thought in this brain is related to me in some way. Obviously, we also don't want to see my thought and then 2,000 connected thoughts down below that wouldn't be useful. So we compartmentalize some of that data. 
uh, the different departments or buckets that my data generally falls into down below, my family, friends, food, health, land, my personal interests, uh, and over here, land and water. But notice that down below, again, two generations. So underwater, I've got information on fishing, scuba diving, weather. I categorize as, as water. That's really one of, what I want to know about. Is the water falling from the sky going to be liquid or solid? Uh, Channel Islands, land is different places where I like to go camping, my house, my cars that I work on, my general interest down below, uh, different types of food, cooking, canning, making bread, beverages, and so forth. So you get a higher level overview of the brain by going into that two plus one. And that is simply done by clicking on the plus or minus. So this is the view you might have become familiar with in the brain. If you're a pro licensed user of the brain, many of the features that we're demoing today are pro features, uh, but we can hit that plus sign to go into um, two generations away and continue on further going into mind mapping view. And again, here it really depends on how much screen real estate you have. I'm gonna shrink my thoughts down just a bit and hit this plus a few more times. So three, four, five, ten generations away from the active thought. And again, it really, I've got another monitor over to the side. And sometimes I create a brain on a specific process or a project that I'm working on, go into an expanded view to really get a high level overview. This might not be a good example of uh, the expanded views and, and mind mapping views of, of the brain, but you can see it's possible to expand your brain out to get uh, potentially every thought within a single brain visible on the screen if you have the screen real estate. Another thing that I want to share with you right off the top of the bat are the reports. So I click on this button next to the search box and I open up my reports. I'll just refresh. This is a fairly large brain, so it just takes a moment for the reports to update. And here again, we can see or in case I haven't mentioned it, running reports is an alphabetical listing of all thoughts in this particular brain. Now, like I said earlier, I sort of cut this brain in half, taking a large section of, the, of its content out so I don't display it on the screen. Still, it looks like I'm actually surprising myself. I'm left with 4,336 thoughts in this brain. This is an a uh, list of all thoughts available in this brain. And if I want, I can click and go directly to that thought. So this is some woodworking projects that I'm working on, some pantry drawers for the, the kitchen pantry, and I've got video tips on uh, how they work, um, and then different parts uh, that can be purchased for the, the side mounts for, uh, for those drawers. And that falls generally in my kitchen dining room under my woodworking area of my brain. And I'll click to go right back to the home thought. So this is just another way of accessing quickly all the data within your brain. You can run a report. I can find a listing of all thoughts, regardless of thought type or tag. I'll say thoughts that have attachments that have been modified uh, you know, within the past week. And you can see these are all the thoughts that I've recently worked on in this particular brain over the, the past week or the past month or the past year and so forth. So it's really another great way to visualize, access, and review your data. There's a lot of customizations that can be done with reports uh, to find uh, just greater context about the, the data that you happen to, uh, to be working in. And of course, I can minimize those reports and go right back to my Plex at any time. Now, the next thing that I wanna share with you are what we call pins. Pin, uh, pinning a thought is an easy way to get to content within your brain that you need frequent access to. Now, over today, the course of today's webinar, we're gonna be talking about quickly getting data in and out of your brain. But in a very large brain, how do we click quickly get to content that is crucial, important, frequent flyer thoughts um, that, that you want to get to. I am often visiting my weekend checklist. So I keep weekend checklists pinned at the very top of, of my brain. Um, I have a, a woodworking project that I really love working on, kayak build. And um, maybe I want to specifically get to this thought, or maybe that falls right under weekend checklist. My other project is my canoe. Um, and under building a canoe, I have 
my canoe plans. Here we go, Ashes. So this is a canoe company that's inspired me to build. And, and as you can see, I've got a lot of information on different plans and so forth. So I just navigated through my brain. I'm gonna re start revisiting this project this summer. So I'm gonna right click and pin this thought. So it's not directly connected to my weekend checklist. This was quite, you know, three or four clicks away. Um, and uh, I'm gonna visit this thought often and start to revamp this particular project on, on this woodworking project. So pins are just really, really great ways to easily get to information that you need to have accessible in a very large brain. And I change my pins out quite frequently depending on my focus or the current season and so forth. Let's talk a little bit about the notes. And uh, we're gonna talk a lot about the notes, but a couple of features that I wanna highlight right off the top of the bat. And those simply are checklists. Now, checklists are great because as we're working through a particular project, we can say, all right, I need to do the following 10 steps and we can check them off as we go and stay organized. That's fantastic. The, there's a few reasons though, why checklists are particular, particularly useful in the brain. Number one, I always feel it's important, and I think this is because I read the book Getting Things Done years ago, um, it's important to keep track of your tasks in a trusted source. It's that simple. Um, is writing everything down on a piece of paper and putting that on a magnet on the refrigerator a trusted source? Well, I have kids, that piece of paper is gonna disappear. I have a dog, it's gonna get, fall off on the ground. Uh, there's many reasons why that won't work. I think I'll reference that example uh, uh, frequently. So writing it down on a, on, a, on a piece of paper for me that just simply isn't gonna, isn't gonna fly, I need to have it digital because I don't work standing in front of my refrigerator. The refrigerator isn't going to remind me about a particular project. However, in my brain, on a thought that I frequent, I've got this checklist in front of me and I can easily keep track of all the projects along the way or all the steps along the way. When something gets done, I check it off the list. Um, I always like to point out that you can timestamp. I hit Control D on my keyboard and that adds the current date and time, as you can see. And that can also be done up above in the uh, content areas toolbar. So to edit, modify, and format your notes, using the buttons up above. Now I've not fixed my gutter yet. Like I said, this is my real brain, so I'm gonna uncheck that item. But here's the next reason why I really love checklists within the brain. The Brain 12 has a really wonderful uh, feature called the to-do list. And just right where I got to the reports, I can click to open up that right panel. And instead of staying on the report tab, I'll jump over to the to-do list tab. You can also click on options, or excuse me, view, and get to your to-do list that way as well. And the to-do list is quite simply showing me a list of all my thoughts in this particular brain that have an unfinished checklist item. I've got, this is a 4,000 thought brain, as we saw earlier, 4,000 plus. I've got, as you can see, 325 thoughts with checklists and not everything is, is completely checked off. If I wanna go straight to the thought, so these are thoughts that I, I frequent and, and recently visited. So here's my Schwinn Twin, that's a bike that I'm rebuilding. If I wanna get to that thought, start working on it, I've got some unfinished items. I can click and go directly to that thought in the Plex and that loads up the content for me and I can go down to installing those white wall tires that I wanted or installing the bell and, and so forth. Um, and this list orders uh, your to-do list by the date modified, as you can see by default. I can order it alphabetically uh, or by date modified. And I can also, here, let's just jump back to the weekend checklist. I can check items off the list over here on the left and they'll be updated. It takes just a minute or two, but uh, you'll see the checklist will update. It'll particularly speed things up if I close it and reopen it again. Uh, but you can see it updates there. I can also check them off in my to-do list panel and they'll be checked off over in the notes. So it doesn't matter where I reference. If I know that I don't need to actually open the Schwinn twin thought, but I installed the 
white wall tires this past weekend. I can check it off the list there. When I go to the thought, I'll see it checked off. So a really, really great way to keep track of ongoing, multiple ongoing projects uh, by uh, viewing your to-do list, keeping those checklists and your uh, thoughts in your brain and reviewing your uh, to-do list from time to time. Uh, the next thing that I want to share with you is another feature back inside the notes area. And yet again, another reason why checklists within the brain are a great way to keep track of your information, to keep track of your data. And this sort of uh, harkens back to uh, thought trails as well, the one of the key topics of today's webinar. Um, now, thought trails, you could think of those in a couple of different ways. The most recently clicked on thoughts are your past thought list in the brain. That's a thought trail, sort of a breadcrumb trail of, of where you've been. But the brain stores information according to how you think about that data. So when I'm thinking about the Schwinn twin that I'm working on, I'm not just thinking about the bike itself, I'm thinking about those tires that have gone flat and need to be replaced, the brakes that aren't working and need to be repaired, uh, the new paint color I've selected. So other bikes that I may be working on. So there's other related information and that is a thought trail. You're not thinking about just one laser specific item. It's all the steps in the process that, that go together or closely related uh, to that one topic. And I can easily find all that related information and the brain helps me to find that by using what we call thought mentions. Now you'll notice right here in my to-do list, um, oh, first, let me uncheck these items that are not completed yet. Uh, right here at the top, I'll just use this as an example. So I need to build, I'm an amateur woodworker, and I'm building two new storm windows, the you know, glass window that sits on the outside of the, of the window in the wintertime. So two new storm windows need to be built. Notice that storm windows is underlined with a little dash underline. Now, if it's just something that's misspelled, I'll type in some gibberish. You can see I've got my spell check turned on, so that underlines in red, but I have a blue underline. I don't always like to point out that it's a blue underline because the underline color depends on your theme within the brain. But regardless, it's underlined. It's not a misspelling. The underline is signifying that there is a thought that exists within this brain uh, that is named with that content. It's a thought mentioned. So two new storm windows. What's going on with my storm windows? I'm going to right click and I can activate or link. So I can make that a link back uh, or a backlink to go directly over to storm windows when I click on it. I just want to activate and review this thought. So it's going to take me to my storm windows thought. And not only do I have a little zoomable icon, excuse my, my amateurish graphics, but that is the window. It's sort of a weird shaped polygon. Uh, so that's the, the window with a couple of measurements that I've taken. So it's gonna take a little bit of work to build this. I've got an attached video down below. Um, so this takes me step by step and that of course plays right here in the content area. Sorry if you can hear that, that was really loud. There's a part that I need and I always forget the name of this part. So, but my digital brain never forgets. I found it on Amazon the Craig K4 pocket hole jig. Um, so this is what holds all these uh, goofy pieces of wood together. And again, they're all connected to my storm window, which is going up in the attic, which falls under the remodel, which falls under woodworking, etc. So this is the, um, you know, the sort of the visual thought trail that I'm referring to. Um, all of the related pieces of data Regardless of where they came from, I've got a video, I've got my own drawing, I've got a part that I need to order. I've got my own notes. Now these notes I pulled out of the video. If I didn't store all of this data in the brain, sure I could save this video in my browser bookmarks and favorite favorites, but it's maybe a 10 or 15 minute video. And if I wanna say, all right, I'm ready to build that storm window, what were the sizes? What were the dimensions of the wood that I needed? What was that part called that drills holes from the strange angle? All that information is here waiting for me in the brain. I, I take a note of it once, jot it down in the notes, 
and my digital brain never forgets it again. If I were just to write down on a piece of paper, build new storm windows and pin that up to the refrigerator, as soon as I remind myself, ah, this weekend I'm pinning the storm windows, where did those measurements go? What was that part called? How did, how did the pieces become assembled again? I'd have to start digging up all that information again. So keeping your data in a trusted source and following these visual thought trails of, of your data is just a key ingredient of the brain to, uh, to help you have better access to all of your information. Now, another thing that I wanna share with you, let's jump back to my weekend checklist. And I wanna just show you how of these, uh, these links pop up. Let's say I'm going to also work on that Schwinn Twin, my bicycle. So I'm gonna hit enter, it gives me a new checkbox. I'll hit uh, chef shift tab to move it back one. And I'll just type in Schwinn twin that's the name of my bike and as you can see it underlines automatically um, so these thought mentions it's it's customizable within your brain preferences so if i go up to options and preferences on the notes editor i can specify should mentions never show up if i don't use that feature uh, show except common words so if you've got a thought called window or the, or whatever the case may be, you know, those thought names. You can see I don't have that selected, so I get underlines like video, wood, gutter, repair. Those are thoughts that exist within my brain. I don't mind them showing up as thought mentions. So I leave mine as show all so that when I need them, I can simply right click and activate that thought and all the related thoughts that come along, data that comes along with it. So how did this data get in here? I'm going to sort of transition into uh, that, that process. Um, first thing I'm going to do, though, is share with you the search as well. Um, sometimes, yeah, maybe this weekend I want to work on my Schwinn twin, but I don't need to document that. I just want to go to the thought. You can utilize the brain's search capabilities. The brain utilizes your operating system's indexing capabilities. So that means on a spotlight, on a Mac, we are tapping into spotlight, and on a Windows machine, we are tapping into Windows desktop search. Your OS does the indexing. So it's accurate for the brain application, uh, and it's quick and light, very responsive. So I can just type in Schwinn, and even in this very large brain with 4,000 thoughts, you can see these are all the thought names that contain the word Schwinn. Down below are all my notes and file attachments. You can see I've got more than one. I, I collect and uh, repurpose old vintage bicycles. So I've got a lot of data about Schwinn's there. And when I find the thought I'm looking for, I can just click to go right to that thought. Let's say I'm also navigating through my brain looking for a thought. Maybe I want to build a new penny farthing. Now, if you don't know what a penny farthing is, stand by, you're about to find out. So I don't see it. Here's my Laura Bloom Blight bikes. So these are the bikes that I have repurposed or rebuilt over the, over the years. I got more information on newer bikes and so forth. These are my creations down below, but I don't see penny farthing here. So I'm gonna do a search for it. Any farthing, no search results. This is one of the key features that I wanted to share with you today, easy thought creation. You do a search, the content isn't there where you expected to find it, or you're finding, hey, I've never added information on this particular topic before. Uh, notice down below, it actually highlights for me. I can create this as a child. There are keyboard shortcuts. If I hold down the shift, I create it as a parent. If I hold down control, I create it as a jump. Control Alt, no, uh, Control Shift. There it is, I created it as an orphan, a floating thought. I wanna create this as a child thought right now. Or orphan thought is very popular. Let's say I didn't know where I want the thought to exist yet, but I wanna create this thought that I just searched for. Control Shift and Enter, and that will create an orphan thought. In this case, I do wanna create a parent. So I'm just gonna hit Enter. And I did a search. Couldn't find what I was looking for, so I just hit enter and the brain created this thought for me. A really, really simple way, and you'll get in the habit of doing searches in a very large brain over time. That content's not there. You're searching for it. You obviously need it. 
just hit enter, it creates the thought or control shift enter orphan thought that you can connect in the right location at a later date and start bringing in your data. So here's my thought, let's bring in the data. Once again, I can go out and find existing data and drag and drop that into the brain. I'm gonna have the brain do the work for me. I'm gonna click or press on F4 and that opens up the search web feature of the brain. That's the keyboard shortcut. You can also go up to, if I click options, web search. And it's going to search for the current active thought. So any thought you happen to be on, you need some data on that content, where are you gonna go? I search the, search the web, that's my go-to. Uh, there's many different built-in and you can even edit and add your own search engine if you'd like. So sometime I'm searching, sometimes I'm searching for a video or something on Amazon to purchase or eBay if it's vintage. Uh, in this case, I like to use Bing, that's sort of my default and I'll search for penny farthing. So I click on search, of course it opened on another monitor. And this is a penny farthing. So it's, uh, some people call it a big wheel bicycle. It's the original bicycle basically. And when I find what I'm looking for, I can simply click and drag from here right into the brain. So even on a search result, some people don't realize this. They might click to open the penny farthing Wikipedia page and then drag and drop from there. But even in your search results, I can just click and drag and then go to that thought. And as you can see, the penny farthing thought loads up in the content area for that particular thought. And I'll go right back to my search results here. There it is. And scroll down just a bit. And this is the example that I was sharing with you uh, or uh, sort of referencing earlier. Sometimes it's not the entire web page that you want. Um, you know, I had instructions on how to rebuild uh, uh, or how to build DIY storm windows, but I just need to know the wood dimensions and what sizes I cut them to. And that's buried somewhere within the website. Well, here's a place that makes new modern penny farthings. Very, very cool. I'll click and drag that into the brain. Notice earlier I dragged onto the active thought. Here I'm dragging under the active thought and that creates a new thought. The thought name is what appears in the tab. And let's say, I'm just gonna click around here. Let's see if we can really quickly purchase one of these. Uh, there it is, buy now, that didn't take too long. Uh, there's dimensions and things. So these uh, look like little kitty ones. Notice the wheel size is getting larger and larger, all the way up to 56. So there it is, ooh, $1,500. So it didn't take me too long. That's even in pounds, so that's really expensive. Okay, great, that's the one I want. I want don't wanna forget this particular bit of content that came off this website. Sure, I could drag and drop this in again, but really all I need to know is be reminded of this content. So I copy that and I go to this particular thought. I'm gonna close the web page and paste in the note the exact price. Um, so that's the one I like, there's the price. I don't need to browse through the website to find that information again. Uh, there were other, um, uh, you know, maybe the only thing I need is to know the spoke length or something like that. So I find some little component and drag it in, or maybe fork frames come in these sizes. And that's what I need to know buried on this much larger web page and I can paste those right into the notes. So that's a key ingredient for me, not always just dragging and dropping web pages into the brain, but finding the key little piece of information, the data, the text, the graphic, and pasting that into the brain. Uh, maybe I just want a picture of a penny farthing as a zoomable icon. So I'm gonna right click and copy this. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, here, let's pop it out into a new window. There we go. And I'm gonna copy that image and right click and I'm going to paste that icon. So there I can just hover over that particular thought. I use that feature quite often as well. Sometimes I'm very, I guess, visually graphically oriented. So sometimes I just need to see a picture of what the part looks like or the direction of the blade or the gear or whatever that I'm working on. So the image, picture's worth a thousand words. Uh, sometimes it's more valuable to me and I just drop in those zoomable icons in the brain so I can quickly access that data. 
Now, I mentioned drag and drop, and just so that everyone is very familiar with that process in the brain, it's very simple. I'm going to minimize my web content, and I thought I had some files here, specifically on penny farthings. Let me see if I can find that here on my other, there it is. So uh, I've got some documents, I'll bring them onto the same screen. So uh, I've got an Excel spreadsheet and a PDF. Again, you can simply drag and drop existing data into the brain. I have my brain customized so that when I drag and drop, it moves that file internally into the brain. It's a very, very important setting that you can uh, change within the Brain app so that the application works best for your environment. Just click on Options and go into Preferences. And on the Behavior, you can specify when you drag and drop a file, do you want to move, copy, or link that file into the Brain? You can always go back and change it as a, at a later date. And there are keyboard shortcuts, so you can override those settings in the future. Uh, but you can set up the brain so that it works best for your environment. I'm not always on the same machine. In fact, I'm going to sync this brain to the cloud. This brain already is synced to the cloud. Uh, but I'm going to make these changes, sync it again, and access this brain by the end of the webinar from my iPhone. And maybe I'll just look up a quick little bit on a penny farthing. Uh, just to show you that it's updated in uh, in the cloud and accessible from multiple devices. And here is the great thing about PDFs that I wanted to share. The brain has its own PDF viewer. So I can click and go directly to, this is a very large graphic, but or a page, but if I just want to see how the seat is constructed, I can go just to that uh, that picture or that page rather within the, the PDF. So I can easily jump around uh, through this PDF. If I need to review this whole thing and it fit it all in one screen, I can resize and so forth. So the built-in PDF viewer is just a really, really fantastic feature of the Brain application. But uh, it's not just PDFs and web pages. Obviously, sometimes we need to drag and drop in uh, content from uh, uh, files and documents as well. So those can easily be accessed and those will open in their native application. So this, once again, it's on another monitor, bring that up. This is going to launch in a, uh, its default application, which is for me, Excel. So another way to quickly capture data is to send it in through BrainBox. So that's the next, feature of the app that um, I really want to highlight for instant idea capture, because sometimes we don't even have the brain open. Let's say I'm going to close this brain, and this will take me back to my sort of default view of all the different brain databases that I have access to. But I don't currently have my Lore Bloom brain open. Instead, I'm out there browsing around the web. And when I find a page that I like, Let's see if I get back to my search results for penny farthing. There we go. So when I find a page I like, um, how difficult is it to ride? Oh, so this is great. It's going to teach me how to ride a penny farthing. I guess there's some uh, uh, some skill to it that I hadn't even thought of before. Let me pause that. So let's say I open this up on YouTube and find that this is a really wonderful uh, video that I need to watch and reference again in the future. It doesn't matter what the web page is. Maybe it was another page to buy penny farthings or purchase order penny farthing parts and so forth. In this case, it's specifically how to ride. So what do I do? I want to save and preserve this data. Do I launch the brain uh, application, then navigate to the correct brain, then navigate to the correct thought, and then drag and drop the page in? No, 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 there's certainly a shortcut for that, and it comes in the form of the Brain Box. So the Brain Box is an extension. I'm using Chrome, so you can go to the Chrome extension page and do a search for Brain Box. You can go to our website and review all the different uh, Brain Box, Chrome, uh, or excuse me, uh, uh, extensions, bookmarklets, different browsers call them different things. Um, but regardless, you can install the Brain Box button in your favorite browser. And so when you find a web page that you really like, that's important to you, you just simply click to add it to Brain Box. Now, I'm not logged in yet. 
the brain box needs to know which account to send this data to. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. There's me. So now I'm logged in and I can add that into Brainbox. I'm gonna grab one more web page. This time, not a video, but just, uh, uh, oh, in case I want some penny farthing art. If I really get into this as a hobby, I like this. I'm gonna add that into Brainbox as well. So great, I've added a few things into Brainbox. Now, one day I return to the brain. So let me launch the brain. And I happen to be in the correct brain and under the location of a topic that I remember, oh, I've added some things in through Brainbox uh, for the penny farthing. Now's the time, this is where I want them to appear in the brain. Little button here in the upper right, I can click and these are my recent add-ons. Penny farthing wall art, we saw that a moment ago. How difficult is it to write a penny farthing? Down below are images that I've added, uh, other web pages. Like I said, this is my real brain. So these are things that I quickly found and I need to add them into my brain and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, but regardless, I'm ready to add this penny farthing information in. Now I can preview if I wanna take a quick look. Gosh, it keeps opening, sorry, on my other browser. There's that penny farthing wall art. And if I want to add that as a new thought, I just simply click and it creates a new child thought with a link to that web page. And here's my video. I'll do the same there. If I really want to go through and start reviewing all of this content within my brain box, I can also pop brain box open into its own tab. And then I can just start clicking and reviewing all of the information that I have. I love old trucks, old Broncos. I love making sourdough bread. <laughs> so these are all real things that are in my brain box that need to find a home out in, uh, in my real brain. Um, so that's a great way to review. And then also, here's another little tip. If I get these into two separate windows and cauliflower cheese pizza, um, shall I, I won't navigate into food. I'll just change this later at a later date. Uh, I can drag and drop that right into, to create that new thought. That's obviously in the wrong area. I'm going to review this later and move it into the, uh, to the correct location. So let me check my notes. The next feature that I wanted to share with you, we've added some data in, uh, related data from disparate sources, files, documents. Um, I also want to start now talking a little bit more about notes, and then we're going to get into thought types and tags. So uh, for notes, I don't have much going on in Penny Farthing, so I'm going to go to where I have it, some existing notes. We talked earlier about um, you know, all the wonderful things that we can do in notes regarding uh, thought mentions, we're time stamping, we're creating our, um, our checklists. Notice also in this note, I am using a little bit of the other formatting features, and these are the paragraph styles. Now, the reason why I do that, obviously, it's nice to have a little header or a title, so I've got different chunks of, of areas within this brain. Uh, but I can also, if this thought becomes a little bit too tedious, long, you know, there's all these different subject matters, and that does happen in many of my notes, I can also add in a table of contents. So I've put my cursor where I want the table of contents to appear, and I'm gonna click on the button up above, um, insert table of contents. I can also alt control T, um, and a pop-up table of contents, I could just right click and pop up table of contents, that's control T. So it just pops up into a floating window and I can go directly to a particular area of the brain. But in this case, now I also noticed that I've got three hashtags here and two hashtags here. I want to modify that. So I delete one hashtag. So they're all the same size. I'll show you why I did that here in a moment. I'm gonna add a permanent table of contents right at the top. So this is a fairly small note uh, so far, but if I wanna just review all the fun things that are on my sort of weekend checklist, I've get some extra time, a uh, three day weekend. I'm gonna build my stand-up desk. I'm gonna clean out the garage or work a little bit on my kayak and so forth. 
um, and then scroll right back up to the top. Now I can also continue to add formatted text using paragraph styles. So notice here in my must do, I just noticed I've got a few things that are house repairs and then I've got a few must do things that are sort of recreational. We're having a big barbecue this weekend, so that's more recreational. I'm gonna type in recreation and, uh, oops, I don't need to right click on it. I'm gonna make this a subheading and above my sort of uh, more urgent house things, I'll make that a subheading as well. How many? Three right there. So notice, I uh, gave myself a couple must do house things and must do recreation, and those were added up above to my table of contents. So again, I can continue on adding more and more data. Let's go all the way down to the bottom and let's say there's kids projects. So I do two hashtags, so hashtag, hashtag, to make it a the proper size subtitle, kid projects. And maybe I'm gonna divide my kid projects into things they have to do, like mow the lawn, versus things that I sort of want them to do, read a book. So three hashtags, or I can even do four to make it a little bit smaller. Uh, space must do, and that's checklist mow, oh, my brain is a little off screen, isn't it? There it is, uh, mow the lawn, and four hashtags. One, two, three, four, good do. So notice I'm using a lot of keyboard shortcuts. I don't always use the buttons in the toolbar up above. I'm doing dashes and hashtags and so forth. Those are all shortcuts to all the markdown formatting syntaxes that we have. If you wanna know more about those shortcuts, and it certainly pertains to today's topic of you know, instant idea capture, so I can format instantly without buttons, 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 just click on this question mark, and that takes you to the Brain's Markdown Reference Guide. Very, very easy to start getting familiar with some of the features that you use most often and you can very, very quickly and easily add that information. Now it's time to show you a couple more key features for instant idea capture. Um, these are all the things that I have to do. Now suddenly I've got things that the kids have to do. There's a couple of ways to divvy this information up. Uh, one way might be to simply put my cursor here and add one, two, three uh, horizontal lines or dashes adds a horizontal rule. Again, there's a button up above, I think there it is, insert a horizontal rule, but I do three dashes and it adds that information. If I do 10 dashes, it adds a page break. Uh, so it's sort of two separate pages on one particular thought. And of course, if I start deleting dashes, it removes the page break or removes the horizontal rule. So that's one way to break it up a little. I could also copy this information Right click and I want to uh, copy. So copy that information and I'm gonna click on attach and I'm going to attach to this thought. It's still a weekend checklist, but it's not my checklist. It's my checklist for my kids. So I'm going to add a new markdown file, a second attachment to the same thought. So I add a markdown file called kids list. and I right click and paste. So those are my kids project. I close this and I come back to my projects. And you can see at the top, I've got an attachment that takes me over to the kids markdown file, the kids list of things to do. So that's basically or essentially adding multiple notes to a single thought. So you've got ideas flowing, you've got ideas coming, you need to get them into notes. You wanna start segmenting them into top priority, low priority and so forth, add multiple markdown files or simply create a new thought with it. So here's the last component that I wanna share with you. I'm gonna go back down to the bottom. I already have this information selected, but if I right click and select uh, extract child thought, what it's going to do is take all of that data. The very top line is gonna to be the thought name. Anything below that is going to be added 
to the content of the note for that thought. So here is just, you know, free flowing ideas right in my brain. Now it's time to clean things up a little, separate them into separate thoughts or separate documents and so forth. For separate thoughts, I just simply select that content, extract child thought, no longer appears in my to-do list. Now I have a new thought called kid projects and here's what they must do, mow the lawn, should do, read a book. So I've extracted that data into its own thought. So that's how we clean house a little bit, still allowing you to free form, you know, add data, capture information very quickly in the brain, but then go back and, and clean things and tidy things up very quickly and easily as well. And so next that leads us to um, thought types and tags. I'm gonna cover this really quickly. Thought types and tags are a great way to add extra context to your data. You can see that kayak build is showing up in yellow, for example. And when I hover over kayak build, I see that that, oh, my fonts are a little small. Let's make that a little bit larger. When I hover over kayak build, you can see that's one of my favorite projects. Um, so I keep track of all my favorite thoughts within the brain. It's not always a project. I said projects, but if I go to my thought tags and view all my favorites, I can see that they are woodworking plans, places to vacation, smoked beef ribs to barbecue, an old truck that I'm working on. So they're projects, they're food, they're activities, they're hikes, they're museums and so forth, they're stores. Um, anything can be labeled as a project. This kayak build is specifically, I gave it four stars. I like to give things one star, two stars, threes and threes and fours. Typically my four star things are favorites. I'll see if I can find, well, I certainly can. Here are all my four star items. It might not be a, an absolute favorite thought of mine in the brain, but it's still four stars. It's really good. Um, paddle and Portage, which is a race that I do with my kids, a canoe race every year, a restaurant that I go to. It's not one of my favorite thoughts. I don't frequent it, but I'm when I'm looking for restaurants to visit in Madison, Wisconsin, I'm going to want to go to Four Quarter because I gave it four stars. Um, so thought types are sort of a, a category that a thought can fall into, and thought tags are typically attributes that those that thought has. And the great thing about thought tags is that they can have multiple tags, multiple attributes. Uh, my kayak is a great example. It's not only a four star uh, project, it's also medium priority. I don't have to get this done right away. It's a fun project that I'm working on with my kids, but it is certainly not top priority. Um, I think if you saw my four star items, I thought I saw, there's chef knife. This is a top priority. And the reason why this is fresh on my mind and a top priority is because this is a woodworking project um, uh, that I need to get done because it is going to be a gift for an aunt of mine that likes to cook. So I actually buy the blade and then do the woodworking and so forth. So it's an ongoing project. It's not just purchasing the project. You have to purchase it, then you have to make it. There's a whole knife blank and kit and things that go along to it. Um, and this is just simply what they look like in the end. This is a completed one. And that falls under both tools and family because it's something that I'm working on and it's something that I'm going to give as a gift. That birthday is quickly coming up, so that's a top priority item. If I need to see all of my top priority items, I can click and view all thoughts that are tagged top priority. Uh, binoculars, again, another gift that I'm purchasing for uh, for a friend. Registering, registering for a couple of races, and then of course my weekend checklist is always going to be top priority. So a medium priority, and then back burner things that I'm working on that uh, you know there's no time limit. It's I can finish those at uh, at a later date, like my bike uh, or a trip to Yosemite, which we keep pushing off until we feel comfortable traveling again. So those are thought types and tags that can be used in many different ways. If I have a new thought type or tag, let's go to my penny farthing thought. And of course, yes, penny farthing is, uh, I really like it. I'm gonna give it four stars, great. Um, it's also a low priority or back burner. 
Um, it's also going to be expensive. So let's create a new tag. And so I'll type in the name. I'm going to start keeping track of um, which thoughts are expensive, which projects are expensive, and which projects are inexpensive. And that'll help me determine what I'm going to work on next with my many hobbies. And I can even click on expensive to go directly to that tag. So far, I only have one thought in this brain that's tagged as being expensive, but I can click to open up the thought properties display and say, all right, I want to select a stock icon for this. And we'll say money. We'll search. Uh, there we go. Expensive, we're going to have the little hand with the dollar sign. So I can clearly see when I'm visiting, ah, yes, just remember, Matt, this is an expensive hobby. Maybe you want to push this off till retirement or, or just do it at, uh, at a later date. So very easy to create those thought types and tags. Again, you can filter by them in your reports um, or just simply go up to the buttons in the uh, toolbar to find all thoughts, types, or tags of a, a, a particular type within the brain. And finally, before I start syncing this brain, I told you earlier we were going to format some notes. We talked a little bit about um, uh, some of the note features and formatting using Markdown. I also want to share with you this little icon, though, the note style. As I mentioned earlier in the call today, I've got a really dark background. And here, let's get rid of, uh, let's close my brain box. We'll go full screen with the lore bloom. There we go. Um, and I think I have that in, popped out in a separate window. So we'll close that. So I like to keep a really dark background. If I change my mind and I want to brighten things up a little, I can simply click on the little icon for the note style. And we have built-in styles. Now we can customize our own. So if I say, all right, I always want the background. Uh, text cursor, like the page itself, to be light blue. Ooh, that's really bright. So the text is going to need to be darker, dark blue. You know, you can really have some fun with this and play around to get the style that fits your preference. If I click on a title, I can change all title to a different font. If I'd like, all headings are going to be something completely different there we go and also i want those centered so headings will always be centered so you can really tweak every little component of uh your notes to best fit your personality or the subject matter of the brain or choose from pre-built styles i think we have 30 or 40 uh pre-built styles that you can choose from to uh, you know, satisfy your your preferences. And there's just a wide variety just to show you. Uh, and they come in three categories, light, dark, and fun, you know, just to show you the different types of scenarios. So if I apply this, it is a universal change throughout the brain. Suddenly all my uh, headings and titles are, um, you know, centered up. They're the specified font type and size and so forth. And if I want to go back, do my preferred style. That's the dark nocturne. That's my own personal preference. I go right back to it. You can customize and save your own to, uh, like I said, really have the notes reflect your own personality. And now that I've made all these changes so quickly and easily, dragging and dropping, grabbing web pages, utilizing the uh, brain box, copying and pasting content and images and so forth into the notes or, or into the plex i am going to sync this brain to the cloud so this brain is set to auto sync so it would sync in the background every four to five minutes you may have seen as i was clicking around i didn't notice that the the sync message would appear at the top of the screen but now that that brain has synced i can access that this brain online so let me open up my browser window where did you go there we are so I can go to thebrain.com. And when I log in, you saw I logged in earlier when I was uh, sending in things in through BrainBox. Um, I'll have an alphabetical listing of all brains that I've ever synced. This brain is called Lorebloom. So I'm going to scroll down to the L's. And there it is. I can access this brain 
through the web client. So I never need to, um, you know, if I'm just logging on to my brain from my wife's computer or my kid's laptop or a Chromebook where I can't install the brain, I can still get to the brain through the web client. If I really need to quickly search how to purchase a penny farthing, I'll just do a quick search, penny farthing, and go right to that thought that we created together earlier right here in my brain. And I can also access this brain from my mobile device. So I'm logging in from my phone, as you can see I'm holding up, and the, uh, the brain always takes you to your most recently activated thought. So, and you can see the sync is happening in the background down below. Where's my cursor now? There it is. Oh, it just missed it. The sync was happening there on my phone, so you could see it. Um, um, the last thing I looked at was a sourdough recipe for some bread that I was making. And as you can see, I keep track of not only the web page where I found this, but just my own notes. So just sort of a quick, just the schedule of mixing ingredients and how much of each and so forth. I keep there in my brain. But everything that I keep track of on my desktop application is available to me on my mobile device. So I'm at a friend's house, we're having a barbecue, and I find out he is also interested in, you guessed it, penny farthings. I just found a really great website on how we can, where we can buy a penny farthing or build our own. Let me pull up my phone and do a quick search for penny farthing. There it is. We just created this, the content today. And in case we need it, there's also some cauliflower cheese pizza, which I added in this area of my brain today as well. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's all coming together quick, easy, seamless access to all the data that I've added. I can remember everything and I've got instant idea capture with the visual notes and thought trails right here in my brain. So that wraps up our call today. That's everything that I wanted to discuss. I saw sort of, I got a glimpse in the background that Chase had his hand full with a, a lot of questions. Chase, maybe we've got about 10 minutes if you wanna um, uh, present with me. And if you, if those of you that are still on the call are able to uh, stick around for some QA, I'd be happy to demo some more features or answer just uh, two, maybe three questions uh, that were coming in today. Absolutely. Uh, we had some good ones today. Um, Great. First one up here. How do you secure uh, sensitive information that you've added to a brain? Fantastic. That is, um, we have a built-in uh, feature within the brain. And let me open up my desktop app one more time. There it is. Um, so uh, we've got a built-in feature in the brain to keep data secure. Um, that being said, let me also share with you, when you create your brain, your brain is private to your account. I sync this brain to the brain cloud. I am the only one that can access this brain with my login credentials. Whether I'm logging in from my phone, uh, from the desktop, I'm the only one. Until I decide to share this brain with other users and either give them the URL, that's a whole nother webinar that we have another time uh, on, on brain sharing. Uh, but regardless, your brain is secure when you are syncing to the cloud. And if you want to know more about how we protect your data, encrypt your data on the upload, storage, download, passwords being salted and hashed and so forth, we can send you a lot of detailed information on our security. That being said, you can also keep individual documents in your brain secure. So let's say I create a brain that I do want to share with someone else. And on my weekend checklist, I've got a very secure sensitive document. So I'm just gonna click attach and just attach a Word file really quickly. So add a file. This is going to be a Word document. So there it opens up Word. And as you can see, this document is top secret. So anyone that I share this brain with, oh, do I wanna save that? Yes, that's saved internally in my brain, that weekend checklist document that is top secret. Now, if I wanna secure this document, I am going to right click on it. So in other words, I'm gonna share this brain with someone else, but I don't want them opening my top secret weekend checklist. So I'm gonna click on encrypt. And this is the brain's built in sort of privacy control for individual file attachments. First, you get a prompt. 
what is your favorite new type of bike? Everyone should be able to guess this password I'm going to type up. Penny Farthing. Penny space Farthing, capital P, capital F. Make a mental note of it. This is all you get. You get your prompt and you need to know your password. If you write into the brain technologies and say, help, I've put a file into the brain. I used your encryption software to password protect it and I can't remember what the password is. I've got bad news for you. We won't be able to find out either. So it is absolutely encrypted um, and you and it cannot be unlocked unless you know that password. So really make a mental note of that. And you even need to check uh, irretrievable if you lose this password. So we're really reminding you, you've got to remember it. So did I spell it right? P-E-N-N-Y, farthing, that's all right, encrypt. So my document is now encrypted. Oh wait, I wanted to add some new information. I'm gonna open it again, not without the password. If I spell it wrong, not going to work. There's no timeout. You can try as many times as you'd like. If I use the wrong case, lowercase, penny, space, farthing, that's not going to work. So capital P E N N Y space F A R V I N G. Enter. There it is. Now I can launch my document. So I'll launch that. And there's my top secret document. There you go. The encryption feature in the brain is a really, really great way to protect individual documents. Make sure you remember the password. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Matt. Uh, next one up. Um, can I export notes from the brain into something like a PDF file, for example? Oh, yes, absolutely. We've got wonderful import and export features of the brain. Again, that's really not what today's topic was specifically about, but um, easy idea capture visual notes, being able to retrieve that in different ways. I do this myself from time to time. Um, well, I do this in a number of different ways. You may have noticed I was checking my notes as we went through the webinar because I had a lot of topics to cover. That is a note in another brain. So here's my other brain that I've got on another monitor. I've got another one over to the right. Uh, but those are my sort of my checklist of all the things that I wanted to talk about today. Another feature that I could have done is, let's say I wanted to talk about my weekend checklist. I'm gonna click on this export button. So this exports it into a document or I can just open it in a browser. So browser, that's the HTML version, super, super easy and it's floating in a, a web browser. But let's say I want to export it into a PDF to open on another machine, send to a friend or what have you. So we can click on export just this note and create a document and I can create a PDF file, an HTML file, a markdown file, or just a plain text file. So I think uh, Chase, you mentioned PDF. So yes, I'll make it a PDF, a couple of customizable features up above and the text size and so forth. I'll save this and I'll save it to my desktop. Weekend checklist PDF save. And there it is. I launched it in uh, Adobe Acrobat. And so here is my checklist and even the little shortcuts work that I have over uh, the uh, table of contents. So all accessible through now through a PDF. So you can ex export individual notes to PDF. You can also import and export data into and out of uh, the brain as well. But the question was about exporting a note. So um, simply done with, uh, with that export button in the toolbar up above. Perfect. And then we got one more for you here. Sure. Uh, how can I set a custom wallpaper for the Plex? Oh, great. Uh, so yeah, I you know I showed you how to customize all of your notes and the colors and the formatting and so forth. You can certainly do the brain as well, the the brain, the Plex, the the wallpaper. I've got my own little blue wave that I really like for for this particular brain. I used to change it seasonally. And I had a winter scape and a fall and autumn and so forth. Now I pretty much stay with the blue wave year round uh, because I, I love surfing and paddle boarding and so forth. So that's just fits my personality. But regardless, um, I know I have this theme saved so I can get back to it later. You can go into options and go down to your brain theme. And this is where you can really highly customize your brain to fit your personality 
or the subject matter. If I want all of my thought backgrounds uh, to be a light green, uh, I want all of my uh, links to be hot red. So I'm going for Christmas colors here. You can really play around with those. I set up themes where everything is all muted gray or blues or purples or what have you. And there's pre-built um, uh, wallpapers and themes. So this will change everything from, notice the notes updated with their format, the colors of the links, the colors of the thoughts, the wallpaper and so forth. So these are some of the built-in um, themes that we have in the brain. They mostly leave the notes alone, but change the sort of look and feel of the Plex. You can customize your own. So if I click on options, that's where I can load up my own wallpaper. So I can select and say, all right, uh, on my C drive, I think I've got a wallpaper folder. There it is. I want this, if it's Christmas time, I'm gonna go with some holiday theme. And so it just loads that up in the uh, in the background. Um, and some of my themes that I've created myself um, are just, you know, I, I like to do both the notes and the content area to match one sort of uh, one sort of scape or purpose. There's my zoom and space uh, and so forth. So you can really, really have a lot of fun with these different types of uh, themes and wallpapers to really create a brain that reflects your uh, your own thought process as well as your personality. So I think we're going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for the questions. Uh, in case uh, Chase didn't get to your question or didn't present it at the end of the webinar, please do feel free to write into us support at thebrain.com. We're happy to answer any additional questions that you may have. And also, I fully recognize that I sped through a lot of data, a lot of information today. You found some things helpful, but maybe I just brushed up against it and moved on to the next, next topic. You will receive a link to a recording of today's webinar, and you can rewatch at your own pace. And we'll also have that link available for you on our website at www.thebrain.com. So thanks everyone for joining me today. It's always a pleasure to not only introduce people to the brain, but to share additional more advanced features and topics as we were doing today. If you do want to roll back and just refresh the basics of the brain, I'll finally, I'll end with one final reminder. Every Friday, the brain 101, happy to um, share the basics of creating a brain quickly and easily. The brain 101 every Friday, feel free to join us. Thanks everyone, have a great rest of the week. Have a happy uh, holiday over the long weekend if it uh, applies to you. And um, as always, enjoy your brain. Thanks everyone.